Ahoy there! Today we're going to show you how to turn a plastic skeleton into your very own drunken pirate animatronic for Halloween. And somewhere in this video, we are giving away this animatronic to one of our US subscribers. So you best be paying attention. First, we start with one of these plastic skeletons that you can get at any store. Then we rip off his head and break his bones. Then we're gonna build him a PVC mechanism and we're gonna use a wiper motor to make him move. Finally, we're gonna give him some old tattered clothes and rotting flesh to complete his look. Screwdriver. I think this is built with spiders. Oh, good, good. Ah, what? That. Oh no, it's a wasp nest, even better. What? This is not gonna work. Okay. We need a saw. He's like, ah! <laughs> That was easy. Why is he missing a leg? Oh, who knows, Because we man. do stuff like this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's arms are poseable, so he's a good skeleton, but I hate his head. It's terrible. Or he's a different head. This head. Oh my. Often the simplest solution is the right solution. <laughs> I also like that this skeleton already has a little bit of a curve to the spine. When we did our other groundbreaker, we spent a lot of time heat bending, but it's a real pain in the neck or in the back, I guess. <laughs> to wait to break his arms off, give him a little piece for now, but next step, make his mechanism. I've gathered all the stuff I think we need for this animatronic, let's take a look. Why are they in a Nemo lunchbox? We'll, we'll get to that. Ta-da! The swaying animatronic is classic. Home haunters have been building this for decades and there's a ton of different ways to do it. What we're after is one that looks really good, has good motion, but is also easy enough to build with simple tools and materials. We came across a recent blog post from a haunt called Demon Ground and they came up with a brilliantly simple way to do this for like a standing up zombie. So we're gonna try to adapt their method. We'll put a link to it in the video description so you can check it out. So the key to this whole thing being so simple are these really clever PVC joints. So let's go ahead and make one. For each joint, the first thing you need are two PVC end caps. We need these to sit flat, but they've got some like weird stuff on the bottom, some little writing. So we're just gonna sand that off with some sandpaper and then you'll have a nice smooth surface. Next, we'll drill a hole in the end that fits our quarter 20 bolt. We put a washer on each end, put the bolt through the hole, then slide some spacers on that fit inside it to keep it from wobbling. In the middle is a big washer. And if you wanna get fancy, you could put a little grease on this so it spins smoothly. The rest of the pieces go on in reverse. And on the end, we use a lock nut so that it doesn't come off. So now that we've built this joint, we can see how it just sort of fits into these existing PVC pieces and they rotate. I've cut off a couple pieces of half inch PVC to use as just little connectors, but it's basically like grown up Legos. You got a bunch of pieces and they all go together. It's fun. So in the center, there's this cross and this is where these little joints come in. This goes like this. And now the spine will rotate in the middle. So if we imagine that this is the skeleton, we can actually get this awesome swaying movement. Isn't that cool? It's so simple. The next thing we're gonna do is put a motor under here to actually automate it. But before we do that, we're gonna check in with Jamie and see how she's doing with turning our boring skeleton into a horrible zombie. My plan is I wanna give him like rotting flesh. I'm gonna give him some new really cool teeth. But before I do that, I wanna sculpt on some menacing eyebrows. Are you gonna give him a scowl? Yes. He's very angry at the living. I'd be angry at the living too if I was a zombie. I think we all would. Yeah. Angry <laughs> skeleton. <laughs> okay, I may have gone a little bit overboard on sculpting the eyebrows and it's probably gonna be covered up with the zombie skin anyway, but I was having fun. Now I'm going to cut his teeth off. You're gonna cut his teeth off? Yes, because I have better teeth to give him. There we go. I feel like the pain in his eyebrows is like, <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, you're ripping my teeth out. Ah. One really easy way to make these guys look better is to get rid of the fake, fake teeth and give them better fake teeth. You can get these online for pretty cheap and then you just put them in with hot glue, put them in crooked, some are missing. It just looks so much better. Now he has some proper choppers. I hot glued his jaw open, but I think I'm gonna take some of the epoxy putty and reinforce that just so it doesn't melt close, but now he's good. So we're gonna let him dry till tomorrow. We need to take our whole mechanism and attach it to a base. But before we do that, we need to figure out how the motor is gonna attach to the base. Now we could just sort of screw it down to the wood like this and leave it there, but we want it to work outside. And we get a lot of rain in October. So 
That's where the lunchbox comes in. I'm gonna attempt to use my son's old lunchbox and create like a waterproof container for the motor and the electronics. Don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna try it. The only thing I've done is I took a piece of wood and I super glued it in there just to give this top a little bit more rigidity because we're gonna basically attach the motor to the top with the motor mounting screws right here. So the first thing we gotta do is drill a bunch of holes to try to get that working. I think if we put it and we can mark the position of the holes and then I can drill it like that. We've got a couple of washers in here just to like fill the space. Look at that, motor in a lunchbox. It's like pretty rigid, there's no flex or anything. So I don't know, we'll see as we get further along, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good about this right now. Eventually I'm gonna put like some silicone on all these little holes I'm making so that water doesn't leak into here. But first I wanna just kind of prototype the whole thing. I'll go back and do that later. Now it's time to attach our PVC mechanism to the wood. And to do that, we're gonna use these flanges. And these basically, the PVC goes in here and you screw these down to the floor. This is all made from half inch PVC to keep it as small as possible. But I was worried that it wouldn't be strong enough. So I got the bigger one inch flanges and then we just got like this little adapter and now the half inch can fit into the one inch flange and it will strengthen everything. That's the hope. Also, the last time we made our own animatronic, we designed our own 3D printable flanges, which you can get on our Patreon. But we're trying to do this whole project with no 3D printing, which is why we're using these other ones. Okay, I put a little connector on here and then we're gonna take our little metal arm, which goes on the motor, put it inside our connector and then feed it on to the motor here. Tighten this down. I've got my wires coming out. Let's give it a test and see what happens. Yes, lunchbox animatronic. Pretend this is a skeleton. Woo! This is awesome. It's way more sturdy than I expected. There's a lot we can do to change like how far over it leans and how fast it goes, but we're gonna do all that later because first we have to build a zombie to now put on this thing. I'm gonna attach this PVC pipe to the skeletons and to do that we're using JB Weld Plastic Weld, which is like epoxy putty made for plastic. Hopefully that's enough. We'll find out in 30 minutes or so. I'm painting the new skull bone yellow so that matches the body. A lot of this will be covered up, but it still helps to have the base colors match. We have our plastic rum bottle and I'm just gonna make it look a little dusty with some gray paint. This is just acrylic paint, super cheap, easy, and shouldn't wash off in the rain. That bottle came out good. Yes. What do you do with a drunken sailor? Shave his belly with a rusty razor. Wait, wait, wait. His... Okay. You could use a rusty razor, or you could use one of these sweet AL13 razors from the sponsor of this video, Henson Shaving. Okay, check it out. The founders have an aerospace machine shop that was hit a little hard by the pandemic, so they decided to use their fancy equipment to make precision single blade safety razors. You're saying the same shop that made parts for the Mars rover made this razor? Yep. Space razor. <laughs> and it's that precision that gives you an amazing shave. Most razors don't hold the blades that well, which allows them to flex and vibrate along your skin, which is one of the top causes of irritation, razor burn, and angry pirates. Arr, my skin. <laughs> Probably shouldn't shave with a sword either. No. The AL-13 holds the blade at an optimal angle, and it only extends 13 thousandths of an inch past the shave plane, which is less than the thickness of one human hair. And there's zero waste. It's made totally of metal, and all the blades are 100% recyclable. They're a bit of an investment, but once you've actually purchased your Henson razor, the cost of of ownership is only three to five dollars per year. And look how pretty they are! Use the code WICKEDMAKERS to get a hundred blades for free with the purchase of a razor. That's two to four years worth of blades depending on how often you shave. Check the link in the description below and thanks for supporting our channel. Now, back to it. Look, this totally works. We actually went back though and we cut off way more of his spine and just did the whole process again because he was too tall. When he was way up there, his torso was like freakishly long. <laughs> Some of these plastic skeletons have a pretty decent range of motion, but what I'm doing here is actually just cutting away some of the extra plastic. That's gonna let me move the shoulders and elbows even further so I can get a better pose. Now that we've got the arm exactly where we want it, we're gonna screw it in place so that it can't move. On our drinking skeleton, we glued all the joints in place, which worked fine, but you're kind of stuck with that pose. You know, if you wanna change it later, you can. Whereas here, if we make a mistake, I can just pull these screws out and try again. On the other arm, I did the same thing on the elbow to lock it in place, but for the shoulder, I'm keeping this one loose. I wanna try something here where we're letting it move a little bit, and then I'm using a little piece of fishing line that's tied from one of the screws just around the rib cage, and I'm hoping it'll just move in a cool way. Let's check it out. Yes. 
Now we've got some nice secondary motion on this arm. We're gonna keep this arm stiff because it's gonna be holding the bottle and I'm super happy with this so far. We started off using a heat gun to soften the fingers and then bend them, but to be honest, it didn't work that well. We discovered though that if you snip a little bit of the plastic on the outer side of the joint, that you can then bend the fingers into basically whatever pose you want. It is time to stain our bones, and that's so we can make our skeleton look old and decayed and stuff. There's a lot of different ways to stain a skeleton. You can use wood stain, you can use spray paint, but for this guy, I'm gonna use an acrylic wash. Since we painted the head first, and it doesn't have that smooth plastic finish, the acrylic's really gonna work best here. All right, it gives us a good place to start with, and it helps bring out like the detail in the cracks and things. On the rest of the body, I'm working in small sections and hitting it with a dark brown spray paint and then quickly wiping it away. This works great, you just have to work really fast. This is a really cool trick I learned from the Stan Winston School. If you dab some barge on your skeleton and then hit it with a blow dryer while stretching it out, it gives you an awesome webbing effect. It dries really fragile, but we're gonna come back later and reinforce it. The next stage is adding flesh. Again, working in small sections, I spray an area with 78 glue and then dab on some cotton using cotton balls. I don't want to cover up all the bones, so I'll just do this where I want patches of rotting flesh to be. He's so fuzzy. I know, he's so fluffy. He's not gonna stay like that. He's going through his awkward fuzzy phase. She's gotta trust the process. Next, we're gonna tap all of this cotton down with latex, and that's gonna give him a really cool skin texture. I also brush on a couple of light layers of latex on the glue webs to give them some extra strength. Look at this, this is amazing. I love the way this gooey texture came out. It's and it was so easy to do. Like this is something you can do to any of your skeletons and just get amazing results. <laughs> Before we paint, I think I need to weather his clothes. Just like our last pirate, we got our clothes from the thrift store and we're gonna slash and tear them up and then throw some paint on them. You know, we consistently find these crazy pirate style pants at the thrift store. Yes, we <laughs> do. <laughs> so do you think I should cut the bottom off or do we just kind of roll them up? Pirates don't roll up their pants. Yeah, they'll kind of just be torn at the knee. I think so, yeah. There we go. Okay, I didn't think you were gonna cut both. Okay, yeah, no, that's awesome. Cool, yeah. No? What? That's fine, yes, yes. Now he's got pirate shorts. <laughs> Did I cut them too short? Um. Okay, I can fix this. <laughs> Hold on. Are you just gonna like tape them together? Just don't worry about what I'm doing, okay? Okay. I, what are you doing? That looks amazing. Well, we want it to be sh like super shredded, like Pirates of the Caribbean style. So I'm just slashing it all over the place and then roughing up the edges with like a really stiff wire brush. The vest is complete. So's the shirt. Did you fix the pants? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I fixed them. That's awesome. fine. Nothing yeah. ever happened. No. And no one will ever know. This, you could have at least lined the, the stripes up. <laughs> I did. I did on one leg. I forgot to lie. <laughs> Listen, we all make mistakes. It's part of the process. Well, that's the Let's just move past this. <laughs> and what are we, uh, are you gonna kind of cut them up the same way? Yeah, I think we should shred them up to the knee. Okay. I'm gonna weather the clothes now so they look dirty and like they've been rotting away just like our skeleton has. To do that, I'm gonna use finger painting method, but I'm gonna get the clothes wet first and I'm thinking that might give me some softer edges to the paint. I'm gonna do a little variety of colors. Some dirt, some, some moss, some black, some ooze. That looks so cool. They're gonna dry lighter, hopefully not too much lighter than this, but I'm happy with them. This guy looks really cool, and I think you could get away with not painting him at all. I think the only thing that I personally don't like is all of the white highlights from the cotton, so I wanna take those down. So if you do wanna paint your skeleton zombie guy, there's a couple easy ways to do it. You can use wood stain, throw it over the whole thing, and then wipe it off. And what that'll do is provide a really nice contrast. It'll make all your details really pop, and your high spots will stay lighter. You could also do acrylic paint, and then wood stain on top of that. A lot of people do that. I think what I'm gonna start with is some selective acrylic paint, and and then we'll go from there. I 
Now that he's painted, we can finally attach the head. And to do that, we're gonna use this five minute epoxy, which is meant for plastic, and it should go on pretty easy. All right, let's see where that gets us. This, so I'm gonna hold this. Can you just tape it to the yes. back? And now I can just kind of put a little more epoxy in here to make sure it's in the right spot. This is a synthetic hair they use to make braids. You can get it at any beauty supply store. To attach it to his head, I'm using some spray adhesive and then tapping it down towards the top. He's gonna have a bandana on, so I'm not too worried about his hairline, but I do tap it down with latex to help blend it in and lock it in place. I think we're finally ready to put everything together and I've got the lunchbox situation all finalized, so let's take a look. So first up is our power supply. This gets plugged into the wall and then we come over here and we drill the hole in the side and we've got a little barrel jack and we filled the edges with silicone so that water can't get in, but this will just plug in just like that. So here's where the power comes in and everything is wired up to the wiper motor. We've also added a speed controller, just like on our Huggy Wuggy animatronic so that we can control how fast the motor goes. Now there's a lot of leftover space in here and we could add some more stuff. So for example, this is called a prop controller and we could put that in here to actually control having it turn on and off and things like that and animate it a little bit. We also have a motion sensor which we could hook up to the prop controller so that it only turns on when somebody walks up to it. You could even put a soundboard in there to have custom pirate sound effects going on as he's moving around. That all gets kind of technical though and for this one we're just going to keep it simple but if you are interested in seeing how that stuff works, let us know in the comments. We gave him a waist. This is so, well he has a waist but it also serves dual purpose. <laughs> <laughs> the clothes aren't gonna get, <laughs> but also so his pants don't get caught up in the mesh. <laughs> we cut a hole in his butt right here. <laughs> That's so it can go over this. It wasn't that funny. So <laughs> was, just keep yeah. going. Okay. We cut a hole so that it would fit over this stuff. Yes. And there's like a wire that goes around here. That is so the waist of the pants can go around this wire and not interfere with all of the motor and stuff. We made a peg leg. Check it out. We took some pink foam and made, you know, like a big rectangle, carved it into a pegish shape, and then Jamie gave it some really cool paint, and now our pirate has a peg leg. Arr! <laughs> put me body back on. I'm kind of afraid to put his shirt on. I know, me too. I don't know if it's gonna... The shirt's way too big for him. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, it sure is something, and I don't like that something. The shirt looks huge on him. He looks like a child skeleton now. Like all the cool skeletal zombie corpsing stuff we did is just covered and gone. Should we try no shirt and maybe put the vest on? A lot has happened since we took off the shirt. It was designed to look good, but also to cover up all of this PVC stuff. And then as soon as we decided we didn't want to use it anymore, we had a new problem, which was you could see the whole mechanism. Specifically though, you could see how wide it was. It had like massive pirate hips. Would you say the pirate had too much booty? <laughs> so to fix that problem, we've made some changes. The main thing we changed was making the entire thing thinner by replacing these outer PVC pipes with these little L brackets. And you can see from the old hips here just how much of a difference that made. To make the L brackets, you could just use these metal ones like you'd use on shelving, but we actually made our own from a piece of aluminum. It's super easy to bend this stuff and drill holes in it, so you can kind of make brackets to the exact size you want. The brackets got bolted onto the lunchbox the same way we bolted on the motor. Since it was a little wobbly, we just put these pipes in to sort of stabilize and make everything rigid. And then finally up here, the PVC is bolted to the brackets, and that's how everything rotates. I think the previous version worked just fine, and if you're doing something bigger, this wouldn't matter at all, but we needed to like shrink everything down, and now it's working great. Is it time to put them back together? Arr. Somewhere in this video, this little skeleton guy has popped up to say hello. If you want a chance to win this animatronic, let us know in the comments how many times you see him pop up and what you think we should name our new pirate. Just make sure you're subscribed and you're in the US so that we can send it to you. This goblin guy was made by Techie Toys. They make a lot of the awesome animatronics you see at Spirit, Home Depot, and all over the place around Halloween. We'll announce the winner on September 1st, and now let's check out our pirate.
this is the end of this video. But if you want to see more pirate stuff, search for the Twinkin' Sultan. Until next time, stay wicked.